Hello everyone, welcome to a new section of the show called Voice Artist Spotlight, where I examine how I view certain voice performers. The reason I'm doing this is because I have a lot of respect for the people of this profession and- hey, listen. Hold on, I got a text. Anyway, I feel like the people in this profession are often underappreciated. After all, who do you see in starring roles in movies like Turbo, Epic, Despicable Me, or Shrek? It's not professional voice actors, it's normal celebrities mostly doing their normal voices. I want to start with a voice actress who I happen to love. Her name is Grady Delisle, and she is one of the queens of the industry. For the last 15 or so years, she's been all over the place, and is one of the voice actresses I heard the most as a child. She is known and cast for doing two types of voices. The first is the dominant female femme fatale type, or just evil sounding girl. Roles that employ this malicious and sexy voice are Azula from Avatar The Last Airbender. That's a sharp outfit, Chan. Careful, you could puncture the hull of an Empire-class Fire Nation battleship, leaving thousands to drown at sea. Because it's so sharp. Catwoman from Arkham City and Injustice. So you and Joker? And basically any side role she gets in Johnny Bravo. Can't I? <laughs> this type of voice is quite often over the top. Someday, I'll have my revenge! But it's very effective and I can see its popularity. Alternatively, the other role she gets cast in, and the one I honestly prefer, is for what I like to say is her cool big sister sound, like Frankie Foster, Sam Manson, and Kimiko Tohomiko. Actually, I was thinking about the one with the two best friends and the girl and the giant rubber band ball. I think I'm seeing your future, and you're kind of a jerk. What do we say? How about Dream On? Although Kimiko's a little less cool big sis sounding. Her two other large roles that don't fit into either of the categories above would be Mandy from Billy and Mandy, who is a softer, less bombastic, and even more sinister version of her normal dangerous lady voice. Dying is easy, winning is hard. And then there's Vicky. Vicky was much earlier in her career, before Grey became a queen in the art. In retrospect, it sounds almost intentionally like a very twisted and unpleasant version of her normal cool big sis voice. Even though she's got these key sounds that she's cast for, Grey's got quite the range when it comes to her voice. She was taught by the late Mary Kay Bergman after all, and if you learn from the lady who voiced all the female characters in South Park, your range tends to be large. Grey's is one of the most expansive I've seen in a voice actress. A very good example of this would be her roles in Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends. She's not just Frankie in that series, she's also Goo and Duchess. Because we're running errands. Why do you think we stopped at the dry cleaners? You? Well, actually, it's Goo Goo Gaga. Only my mom calls me that, and only when she's mad. Which isn't very often because she doesn't want to restrict me and my natural impulses so that I have a proper self-esteem when I become a teenager and- Good gracious! Is this polyester? Side note, Grey can convincingly convey fluency in Japanese. Evidenced by her performance in that awful series, Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi. That's even better than Kevin Bacon faking German in X-Men First Class. Aside from animation, she also does a few video games, mainly extra roles, though recently she has been featured more prominently. Like I mentioned before, Catwoman. She's also the female wizard in Diablo 3. Just stay with me. Here. You want this? Yes, Grey Delio is a major character in the Diablo series. God, that makes me so happy. She also gets the special honor of being the current voice of Daphne Blake. I realize Daphne is universally accepted to have no personality, but it's still a nice title to hold. Most songs I heard from shows in my childhood were performed by either Tom Kenny or Tara Strong, so I never got to hear Grey's singing voice in the shows I had growing up. But I gave some of the songs on her album a listen. Yes, yeah, she's also a professional singer-songwriter. And I heard her as Black Canary on the musical episode of Batman the Brave and the Bold. If only he could love me. He could love me. She is good. She's really good. Grey also gets a highlight because out of all the famous people I follow, she's one of the coolest to her fans. She always interacts with them and is very much a nerd like us. She's actually responded to my tweets before, one of only two voice artists to do that, the other being Christina V. Although I do want to be careful of Grey, she's got the internet eyes of a hawk. Doug Walker was doing his video logs in Avatar The Last Airbender, and she made her presence known there. I'm not even safe from her. I once made a post about her on my Facebook page, and her Facebook page went and liked comments that complimented her strong voice acting skills within one minute of when they were posted. I didn't know whether to fangasm or be completely terrified by the fact. 
Still, she is amazingly skilled, cool, eccentric, and also creepy. Thank you, Grey.